By design, Starship has a number of different variants. Tankers, landers, point-to-point, -point, and more. But how many different versions of Starship are there, and can we expect any new ones to pop up as its development program continues? Let's go over each variant we already know about, and then do some speculating about what others we might see, including a seemingly new and counterintuitive variant that's just about to be assembled. Let's get right into it, but first, thanks to our sponsor for this video, Surfshark VPN. Starship is designed to be a versatile system. Even in its original public unveiling, then known as the Interplanetary Transport System, or ITS, there were at least three variants proposed. Crewed, uncrewed cargo, and tanker, all of which were related to getting humans to Mars. And since then, as both SpaceX and other industry members have explored possible applications of Starship, the number of variants has grown. By my count, we're around eight known or proposed variants right now, and there could be more to come. Let's start off with the version we know best, and the one that's flown several times already, the uncrewed suborbital prototypes. These vehicles were very simple compared to the operational versions, and only performed short suborbital hops. SN5 and SN6, flown in 2020, featured just the tank section of Starship, with some prototype deployable legs attached inside the engine section. Both successfully performed 150 meter hops. Later variants, such as SN8 to SN11 and SN15, featured a nose cone and flaps along with three Raptors, making them much closer to the final version. Only two starships from this group landed, SN10 and SN15, but SN10 landed a bit too hard and exploded due to its methane tank being cracked and leaking. We also, of course, can't forget Starhopper, which flew back in 2019 but had very little design similarity with Starship. And if you want to learn more about the old Starhopper, check out our two-year anniversary video on the vehicle. Next, we move to the ones everyone is so excited about nowadays, the orbital prototypes. These vehicles feature three sea-level raptors and three vacuum raptors, giving them better performance in the upper atmosphere and the vacuum of space. And since they're going orbital, or at least SpaceX hopes they will, they will feature a full heat shield with over 16,000 tiles. The first in this group was Ship 20, which was expected to make the first orbital flight on top of Booster 4. Although it completed a smorgasbord of testing, it was eventually moved to the rocket garden and bumped from the orbital flight for unknown reasons. After scrapping or skipping a few prototypes for an improved version, Ship 24, SpaceX made some upgrades. Ship 24 features all of the previous enhancements, but now has a Starlink satellite dispenser installed. This means that if it flies on the orbital flight test, it will perform some work for the company, deploying the first ever Starlink V2.0 satellites. Ship 24 seems to have completed all or almost all of its pre-flight testing, including some stunning static fires. And be sure to check out shop.nasaspaceflight.com to pick up a metal print of some of the recent Starship testing. Ship 25 seems to be of the same design as well, and no matter what happens on their flights, these two ships will provide SpaceX with priceless data on how to improve the Starship system as a whole. But it seems that SpaceX is taking a bit of an unexpected turn with Starship after Ship 25. For a while, we assumed they would keep flying similar orbital prototypes to get data on re-entry and descent, and of course, improve the design along the way. But several strange things are happening with Ship 26. First off, the nose cone for Ship 26 was rolled out of Tent 3 and moved next to its nose cone barrel, which also acts as a Starlink payload bay. This is all normal for Starship, but the strange part is that neither the nose cone nor the nose cone barrel have any heat shield tiles or flap hardware installed. Now, SpaceX may have changed their production sequence, but this would be a huge change and seems like it would just be inconvenient. Other sections of Ship 26 have been spotted with no tiles attached as well, and some that did have tiles were seen having them removed. What seems to be happening here is that SpaceX may be building one or more expendable starships. While this seems odd at first, it could have some good reasoning. It takes longer to build a vehicle like Ship 24 over Ship 26. SpaceX will save a good bit of time, effort, and even money by not adding heat shield tiles or flaps. This gives them the benefit of building and flying vehicles faster and getting Starlink 2.0 satellites up quicker. Starlink is already very limited in bandwidth, so having more powerful satellites sooner will be a huge moneymaker for the company. Also, they don't really need to worry about re-entry right now. They won't need to return anything from orbit anytime soon. 
Plus, there are a lot of things that can go wrong in the launch portion, and it may be best to figure that part out first. So it seems that SpaceX may be pausing the re-entry testing of Starship after Ship 25, but this in no way should be seen as them abandoning reusability. Remember how SpaceX abandoned Falcon 9 parachute recovery early on, only to return to testing recovery later, albeit with a different method? This just seems like a shifting of priorities and an acceleration of Starlink 2.0. But now, let's look into the further future. What operational Starship variants will there be? We'll dive right into that after a quick word from my good friend, Jack. Thanks, Ian, and thanks to our sponsor for this video, Surfshark VPN. Have you ever wondered how secure your activity online is? Well, if you're not using a VPN, the answer is unfortunately not very. When you browse the internet without a VPN, companies are able to track everything you do. They can tell what kind of device you're on, what websites you look at, where you are, and where you've been. Then, they can use or sell that information to advertise to you. It's not just companies either. Hackers and other nefarious actors can track your activity and exploit your info in a number of unsavory ways. A VPN like Surfshark masks your IP address and encrypts your data, making all of that impossible. It prevents you from being trackable and keeps you safe online whether you're at home or on public Wi-Fi. Plus, as a bonus, you can change your location virtually to wherever you please. Is there a TV show or movie that's not available in your country? Use Surfshark and you can stream shows or even use apps and services that aren't available in whatever country you're currently in. Save 83% and get an extra 3 months free right now by going to the link below and entering the promo code NASA Spaceflight when you sign up. Thanks again to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. Back to you, Ian. Thanks, Jack. So the first operational Starships to fly will likely be the reusable Starlink deployers. As I said, Starship is necessary to fly the full-size Starlink 2 satellites. So dozens, if not hundreds of these flights will need to take place over the next few years. After that may be a conventional satellite launcher. This would be similar in design to the Starlink launchers, but with an opening payload bay of some kind. We've seen several nose cones being used to demonstrate possible payload bay designs in the past, but Elon Musk has said the design is not firm yet. As a side note, a version of Starship without flaps or a heat shield has been proposed for deep space missions such as launching probes to destinations far off in our solar system, but not much has been discussed of this version. But SpaceX has signed contracts to deliver satellites to geostationary transfer orbit with Starship, including for Sky Perfect JSAT's Superbird 9 satellite in 2024. Starship is rated to deliver a remarkable 21 tons to geostationary transfer without refueling. But what if someone wants to launch a heavier payload, or even to geostationary orbit itself? Enter the refueling, or should I say refilling, program. Starship is being designed for something never really done before on this big of a scale. In order to get heavier payloads to higher orbits, or to get any payload to the moon, Mars, Jupiter, or beyond, Starship will have to refill its propellant tanks in orbit. The first pieces of this puzzle are the propellant depots. As their name suggests, these will remain in orbit and be refilled to act as a staging point where other starships dock for refueling. That way, a ship bound for Mars doesn't need to conduct multiple tanker rendezvous to refill, it can just dock with a depot ship that's already got all the propellant it needs. These depot ships will not have flaps or a heat shield, and may be stretched compared to other vehicles. It's unknown if they will have an empty nose cone or if the entire fuselage will be a propellant tank. The propellant depots will be refilled by the tanker variants of Starship. Like the depot, not too much is known of the tanker specifics, but the idea has been floated around just to use Starships with empty payload bays as early tankers, before moving over to specialized ones that are entirely propellant tanks, like the depots may be. The tankers will feature flaps and a heat shield in order to return to Earth to be used again. Each depot will take several tankers to refill, but the exact number is unclear right now. There's also the uncrewed surface cargo delivery starship. This variant hasn't been discussed much recently, but would likely feature elevators and even cranes to deliver a payload bay full of materials to the surface of the moon or to Mars. These would likely fly to Mars before any crew does, just to have a sort of warehouse of materials already staged for crew arrival. And finally, let's discuss probably the most exciting ones, the crewed starships, the end goal of this entire program. The one being talked about the most recently is the HLS, or Human Landing System. 
A special starship, without flaps or a heat shield, but with legs and special landing engines, will land two people on the moon around 2026 for the Artemis 3 mission. The vehicle will have to be refueled, utilizing propellant depots and tankers, and the exact logistics for that are still being figured out. There's also the conventional crewed starship, with flaps, a heat shield, and crew areas. These would be used for sending people to Mars, orbital flights, as well as point-to-point -point travel on Earth. This version may be the first to fly with people on board when it lifts off on the Polaris 3 mission in the next few years. So it turns out there's a lot of Starship variants. Around 8 major operational variants have been proposed, to be exact, but more could come about. We could see specialized variants just for the military or for, say, deep space probes. And I'll be honest, the number of proposed variants of Starship even surprised me when I was writing this video. But the Starship system has the potential to be an extremely versatile asset, and it's going to be incredibly exciting to watch it develop, mature, and be implemented all throughout this decade. Thanks for watching. To see what happens with Ship 26 and future vehicles, be sure to subscribe and catch our Starbase videos that show all the goings on and other activities down at Boca Chica.